Hello everybody, Crit Crab here with another story, this one about something that should be quite familiar for more experienced internet users. A live journal train wreck. Roll post. This was years and years ago, when live journal was a relevant thing and RP communities were fairly commonplace on that platform. Not the typical sort of role-playing game that frequently gets discussed in this subreddit, but a play-by-post game which required fairly minimal GM involvement. The game in question was one of those big pan-fandom games that you'd sometimes see, with players taking on roles of characters from books, movies, comics, games, and such, and throwing them together into a single setting. Not my usual sort of game, either then or now, but the premise seemed interesting to me. Characters duped into taking a trip with promises of their fondest wishes being granted, only to find themselves trapped in a desolate and inescapable British castle and its surrounding estate and investigating the mystery of what brought them together from their disparate worlds and how to escape whilst interacting with these extreme and outlandish people from other realities. Fertile ground for some interesting role-playing premises. At the time that I joined the game, little did I realize it had just undergone something of a collapse in its player base. Many of the longtime players had left after a huge personal conflict with the GM, whom for reasons which will become clear later I will call Camel. I was never 100% clear on the details of this falling out, but in retrospect, nothing about it surprises me. Suffice to say that Camel was a difficult person to get along with, and a large number of players had collectively decided they were done with her bullshit. Nevertheless, I found myself greatly enjoying playing with the other players in that group who remained active, and became deeply invested in the game. However, over the course of these first several months, Camel gradually went completely silent, not responding to any messages and essentially abandoning the game. By the nature of the game, this wasn't necessarily a death sentence. The players were free to continue to roleplay among themselves. It just meant that no new plot elements would be introduced for us to interact with. In this time, I started both regularly playing and talking with a player whom I will call Chihuahua. Our talk became increasingly flirtatious and eventually romantic, and in our talks she revealed a bunch of stuff to me that shed some light on all of this. She and Camel were roommates, and apparently Camel had just grown so dissolute over the departure of all of the players that she actually cared about in the game that she no longer felt any investment in it. I suggested to her that perhaps she could ask her roommate if the two of us could be given sort of co-GM authority to just kind of move things along and keep the game running. She agreed and secured this permission and we managed to get things moving again. Over the course of the next few months, we managed to recruit a whole bunch of new players and get numerous new plots going. Camel was completely checked out. Chihuahua and I agreed that what would be best for the game would be if she were to formally resign and hand it over to the both of us, but that due to her ego, it was unlikely she would ever do so. Eventually, I made a trip to see Chihuahua in person, down in the southern United States for a two-week vacation. I won't go into personal details of that visit, but there are some details which are germane to the game and by extension, this story. The two of them, and a third roommate who plays no relevant role in this story, lived in this bizarre little hovel way out in the middle of the desert, filthy in ways which are hard to encapsulate. The most memorable detail was the washroom mirror. Imagine if every time you brushed your teeth, you then spat out the frothy mix of saliva and toothpaste directly onto the mirror itself, and then just never cleaned it, and nor did your roommates. It just became this sedimentary formation of dried toothpaste spit piled on itself, obscuring your reflection. Then extend this level of squalor to every other aspect of the home, and you should be able to form a coherent mental image of the place. For the fact that in addition to, like, five dogs and a pair of small dogs of some Mexican breed which Chihuahua also had, the name of which I can't now recall, Camel owned a lot of exotic pets, some of which I believe are illegal to own in the US. Among them were an emu, the most vile of all birds, and a pair of camels. Apparently she was from some old money family and just received this hefty monthly allowance which she spent almost exclusively on these exotic animals and basically nothing at all of on home upkeep. Evidently, she'd basically never worked a day in her life and this was just her thing. In the first several days that I was there, she never once made herself seen or known, just keeping to her bedroom 100% of the time. 
It wasn't until about a week into the trip, during a night when we went out into the city for dinner, that she joined us for the outing and I got to meet her. All things considered, it was a surprisingly cordial meeting, and we actually had some pretty fruitful and productive discussions about which things could be done with the game, which left me feeling pretty invigorated about the whole matter. By the time I went home, it was clear that the romantic aspect of my relationship with Chihuahua wasn't going to work out. Sometimes what works online doesn't necessarily translate into IRL chemistry. It happens. Again, no need to go into details, but we ended things on what seemed at the time like amicable terms. Immediately upon my return home, we kicked off a big meta plot development in the game involving every player and splitting off into three big threads, which would propel the game's long stagnant plot forward in a bunch of exciting new ways. Chihuahua insisted on having one character in each of these threads that she's been writing in order to keep things moving along. This would soon prove to be rather ironic. She quickly lost interest in all of them and went silent. Even with gentle prodding by the various players, she could not be coaxed into any participation of any of them for weeks, and then months. Other things were happening in the game in the meantime. I was using my assistant GM status to give the players plenty to play with, to keep things bouncing along and interesting. As Chihuahua disappeared entirely from the game as Camel had before her, I maintained the game's public chat room keeping the community engaged and social, moving things along as best I could. There was considerable sourness among the players towards Camel and Chihuahua, who were seen as holding back the game's progress, and the ability of the other players to get anywhere with the main plot of the game. But we were all still having fun with one another. By this time, there were dozens of players in the game, most of whom had never had any interactions with Camel at all and only knew Chihuahua as that other co-GM who never does anything and is holding everything up. So imagine everyone's surprise when after the better part of a year of silence, Camel puts out an admin post notifying everyone that I was being stripped of my position and authority, and that she was resuming full control of the game without having had any communication with me about it ahead of time. Continued in part 2. End post. Sounds like an odd place to end the story, but oh well. I guess you're gonna have to wait another month for the second part. As if! Crit Chad here with both parts in one video. Sacrificing double the views for the common good. Roll post. In order to move forward with our story, we must first take a few steps back to examine some of the relationship dynamics which existed between Chihuahua and I and between she and Camel. At the time that Chihuahua and I began our romantic dalliance, she and Camel were essentially not on speaking terms. Despite living together in their fascinatingly squalid desert home, she spoke in positively scathing tones about her roommate. About her selfishness, irresponsibility, her cruelty, and spite. All of these tracked for me, given what I knew about her, and it was one of the things which we bonded over early on, before more meaningful connections formed between us. She often voiced her concern that Camel was likely to delete the game entirely rather than allow it to continue without her, and in light of this, I made a point of not only keeping the archives of the game, but contact information for everyone in it. Even after the dissolution of our romantic relationship, we were very much on the same team together, and regarded Camel as our mutual antagonist and someone whom we were essentially running the game around and with the hopes that she would just step down eventually and let us do our own thing without constantly living in the shadow of her malignant squatting presence. Then suddenly, one day, everything changed. Chihuahua and I had launched a bunch of plot lines together to get the game's meta plot moving, having worked out all of the nuances as a team. Then one morning, I wake up to her informing me that she was changing a bunch of major details after discussing them with Camel. And that's how it's going to be. I was kind of gobsmacked that she wasn't asking or suggesting or inviting any sort of discussion. She was dictating to me, and what's more, dictating under the aegis of Camel's authority. I asked her what was going on and was informed that the two of them were friends once more. I pointed out things about Camel which Chihuahua herself had said to me not a month ago, and she became furious with me for using her own words against her. To this day, I can't help but wonder if Camel had opportunistically reforged that friendship just for the sake of leveraging that friendship to get between Chihuahua and I. I suppose I'll never know, though it certainly wouldn't surprise me given the cynicism and dishonesty which I would see from her later. 
This was the one and only time I ever actually got angry at Chihuahua. Not just for the sudden reversal, but the curtly dictatorial tone she took with me about it. There was no effort made to make me feel included or even hide the way that I was being excluded from this process which I had begun. It wasn't even the game. It was the sense of personal betrayal from a woman whom I'd loved and who was treating me like I didn't matter. Nevertheless, I soldiered on and did my best to work with it. In the months to come, as I mentioned in part 1, Chihuahua began to drift more and more away from the game, and what little interaction she had with it was almost always antagonistic and disruptive and unpleasant in nature, as she became less and less engaged. The last meaningful interaction I can recall was her declaring that all of the threads which she was taking part in were now over because they're taking too long completely glossing over the fact that the only reason this was the case was the fact that she hadn't participated in them for months, while everyone else was eagerly waiting for her to get back in them. All of this fell on deaf ears. It was all about what mattered to her, not what mattered to anyone else. Right near the end of my time with the game, there were so many active threads with so many characters that it was becoming challenging to keep track of where everything was and I had begun designing interactive HTML pages as references for the players with a visual timeline of events, each of them a clickable link which would lead to the thread in question. I put it out there for a discussion with the players that it might be a worthwhile idea to include an in-game calendar so that the posts could be referenced as taking place on this or that date, for easier organization. Camel and Chihuahua were portentously silent on this topic, Every player except one was in favor of this, whom I will call Wolf. Wolf was friends with Camel and Chihuahua, and had been from the beginning. Though Wolf was also close with me and a number of other players, Wolf was savagely against even the discussion of the idea, feeling that Chihuahua and Camel might feel unfairly pressured to include it if it was known that literally every other player in the game favored the concept. It wasn't even that anyone had anything bad to say about the idea, it was just that the notion of me adding something to the game that everyone liked, at this point, was a step too far. The next day was the admin post from Camel saying that I was being removed from my co-GM position and that she would be resuming her role. Her rationale was bizarre, claiming that I had overstepped my bounds in the remit I had been given, despite the fact that I had chat logs of her agreeing with everything she was condemning me for which I could, and did, show to anyone who was curious. It was a truly shameless form of deceit which was incredible to behold. In retrospect, I would even go so far as to call it Trumpian in nature. At the time that she posted it, virtually everyone else was in the game's chat room with me. One which Camel had never entered and Chihuahua had been absent from for months. We were all kind of stunned, and instantly moved our discussion to a private chat room where Camel and Chihuahua couldn't listen in to our discussion of this move. Before we left, Wolf begged me not to leave the game. I told her I would have to think about it, though even as I said it, I knew there was no circumstance under which I would continue to spend any part of my leisure time dealing with Camel and Chihuahua's bullshit. How little I knew. In private discussions with every other player in the game, we all very quickly agreed that we would just go create another game elsewhere, where we would import our existing characters, stories, and everything else we were enjoying, and simply carry on without Camel or Chihuahua. We agreed not to talk to Wolf about it until it was done because we knew she was friends with them and didn't want to put her in the position of having to decide whether to betray the trust of one group of friends or the other way, but that we would invite her to join us once the new game was created. When the time came, I set up a new game with a similar premise and setting where we could move our characters over. With a bit of narrative hand-waving, we decided that there had been a distortion of the timeline and that the characters all found themselves in essentially the same situation, in a new locale, so that we could just pick up where we left off and not have to worry about Camel's absurd drama any longer. We invited Wolf to join us, but she was so heartbroken at having been excluded from this plan that she initially refused to join us. I understood and apologized, bearing her no ill will. We started playing for about a week when suddenly our game was deleted from LiveJournal, and I received a notification from the site admins that we were being shut down for DMCA takedown. Apparently Camel was so enraged that she undertook the legal steps of having our game removed from the site on the basis of it being an infringement upon her intellectual property. 
Now let's be clear here, 95% of the characters in both games were borrowed from other properties, movies, TV shows, comics, and the like. The whole foundation of the game was built upon intellectual property theft. I don't say this with any judgment, I was as guilty of it as anyone else. But for Camel to hypocritically leverage this as a means of punishing us for not wanting to play with her was just a surreal level of cynical hypocrisy. Shameless, once more in a way that I had never encountered either before or since. And over what? Our not wanting to play pretendy fun time games with her anymore? I contacted the site admins and they basically said that their hands were tied until and unless I won a court case against Camel to demonstrate that the claim was not valid. They were not legally permitted to reactivate our game, which meant that the onus was on me to take weeks off of work, costing me hundreds of dollars, travel down to the southern US, costing me hundreds of dollars, retain a lawyer, costing me hundreds of dollars, etc, etc, and all it cost Camel was the time it took her to fill out some nonsense paperwork. The Live Journal admin candidly admitted that it was a bad law and that she was no fan of it, but that she was powerless to do otherwise in this situation. I contacted Camel, asking her what she wanted in order to resolve this issue in a manner which was mutually satisfactory. She made it clear that she wasn't interested in my satisfaction, and that as far as she was concerned, the matter was resolved. She had managed to punish me for daring to leave her game and take all of these players she had never met and had no connection with me. I asked her why she even cared so much about a game which she hadn't touched in the better part of a year anyway. Why would it have any impact on her when she was so clearly uninvested in the game and to this, she simply had no response at all. Silence. At this point, we decided that our only move was to create a second new game and to set it to private. We could all take part, and while Camel would see that it existed just by checking what communities our accounts were subscribed to, it would be a blank edifice to her. She couldn't fill out another frivolous DMCA claim against us since she couldn't see or learn anything about it, and thus there was nothing she could put on the paperwork to shut us down. This did unfortunately mean that we were essentially trapped behind these walls and unable to advertise the game to new players. Because if they could see the game, so could Camel, and she would have us shut down again. In fact, we noted that she'd set her account to following our game despite not being a member, and indeed having been preemptively banned. The moment that it was ever anything other than private, she would know and she would come for us. It was a one-woman siege with instant death rules and no means by which we might retaliate. At this time, Chihuahua contacted me one last time to let me know that Camel was doing this specifically to spite me, personally, for what I'd done to both of them. She told me that she felt that I had never really loved her and that I had only ever been claiming to in order to take advantage of her. I woefully informed her that while I had perhaps loved too easily and too quickly, that didn't make the emotions any less real at the time. It's just that she had done everything in her power to corrode and destroy that love in the months which followed. She asked me how she had done so. In the spirit of good faith, I responded by saying that if she was genuinely curious, I would let her know in the hopes that going forward, in future romantic relationships, she might understand a bit more about herself, and thus perhaps do less damage to the feelings which others have towards her. And I gave her a list. Her response began with, Oh yeah? Well you? And I'll never know what the rest of it said, since I hit delete on it then and there. And I never spoke to her again a fittingly brusque capstone to our doomed romance. The new game thrived as best as it could in these conditions for quite some time to come. A few months later, Wolf would join us. I would later learn that Camel and Chihuahua would consider this such a deep, personal betrayal that they never spoke to her again when she did. I never said so, but I took some small, dark solace in the idea that while I had never held her friendship with them against her, they had not done likewise which felt like a moral victory to me. Once every couple of months, I would glance over at Camel's game. She had a big recruiting drive immediately after we all left, and then apparently lost interest in the game once more about three months later, leaving it to drift off into oblivion and silence just a dozen or so weeks after she had subjected us all to this drama. Even so, we never felt comfortably safe enough to make our games private, feeling that it was very likely that if we ever did, it would be the last day of our game's existence. Nevertheless, while our game shouldn't exist in the light of the sun, 
I was able to take some satisfaction in the thought that her own game had suffered the same neglect as her bathroom mirror, and died in that same smothering darkness. There is sometimes poetry in life. End post. Does Live Journal still exist? Huh. Well, you know. I think the OP here handled it as best as they realistically could, by stepping back and letting the that guys destroy themselves. People like that can't function without taking somebody down to their level, and if there's nobody else to drag down, they'll do it to themselves. Also, it's just a little interesting to me as a YouTuber to hear about unfair and crazy enforcement of copyright laws outside of YouTube and Twitch these days. This guy was getting the YouTuber experience before YouTube was even a thing. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time.